Yeah, watch this for a minute while I go get some the old, upstairs. Thank because you. now, today, we have reinvented fried chicken. And have you noticed how popular it is? XQC I have cooked now. millions and millions of pieces of chicken over my lifetime. Uh, we just pulled in a delivery of chicken, and we want to right away get this chicken marinated. That's one of our secret marinating. This is a one and a half size cup of marinade. I learned practically everything you need to know about a chicken from the farm to the table. We have a farm that is absolute highest standards for producing chicken in the country. My middle man and I have been doing business for over 25 years. He knows what I need as a chef. So it starts with this raw product that comes here fresh every day, six days a week. So that's the process for seasoning the chicken. Now we're gonna take it to the cooler. The new goes to the top. The stuff from the day before goes to the bottom and then we kind of cycle it in in the middle is what's used in what the is day. Chet Make sure that it's, it's marinated for that? at least 24 hours or so. You can only imagine how Feed many biscuits world, and how vegan. much chicken we go through if up. we get these once a week. So, in the brown mix is for for chicken, the white is for the biscuits. So we, you know, we load them here, we count it, make sure we have enough, and then we bring it in and we load it for the restaurant. So, right now I'm going to get the batter and I'm going to walk you guys through how we get that process going. Yes, we used to do this back in the restaurant in Compton, and that was actually one of my first jobs in high school. I would have to drive all the way out to the restaurant in, that my dad had in Compton and, and make this by hand. Trenton is my middle son, and he works real closely with me on everything Honey's Kettle. He's an amazing chef, a truly amazing. Oh, so here's the mix. Oh my god, it's still hot. I can't it has believe all, it. You know, the ingredients, we are flour, so fucking lucky course, today, boys. Uh, different spices and seasonings and different types of salts. So we start with filtered water, fresh filtered water. That gives us the best, the best flavor, the best crisp. My dad has been been doing these recipes and creating these oh my God. recipes for years. So every look so at this thing. He... Look at it. Oh my God! Look at it. You know, he changes up the amount of water we use because he wants it to be a perfect consistency. Would we'll you look at that? To something like a uh, hundred pounds a day of, of batter mix. That would be two of those bags you just saw. Pour that in. So we're ready. It's a smoke made though. It's like a perfect consistency after the three minutes and the amount of mix we did. It's like a, I like to call it like a melted ice cream milkshake type of consistency. So what we do is we come to the raw chicken here. This is the marinated chicken. And we put it to one side like that. And the purpose for that is when we go to dip the chicken in it, we don't want the, the batter to fall off really slow because it, then it's gonna be caked on batter. And we don't want it falling off so fast that it has no bubbles to it. We dip it in our batter and you see that nice creaminess and how it shakes and we shake off the excess, and then we drop it in there. And you see that, that batter, see how it's dripping off? You're already an expert. You say, it's not running off like water. It does have a certain thickness that's holding. Our chicken is made through a process we call it done. the reinvention this. of kettle fried chicken. A kettle is a deep vat of oil. We're talking like 50 pounds of oil. We use 100% peanut oil. It's the highest grade of oil you can use. When we drop our wet chicken, it goes to the bottom. So what it's doing is locking a crust, a crispy peanut oil fuck yeah. crust. And that crust is gonna lock in all the natural flavor of the chicken, the marinade, and it's going to- It's more expensive, but you can, you can tell the difference. Like, it's night and day. Of it because of the heat. Where does the heat come from? The heat comes from the bottom. So this is a, a, a modern kettle, right? So that heat is gonna be more intense at the bottom than at the top.
This is an invention of mine. It looks like, uh, you know, a sword, but it, we call it a kettle fork. We can't put our hands in there, but we can reach down here in the bottom of the kettle, and you'll notice when I get to the bottom, the chicken has lodged itself onto this heavy-duty grate. I had these purposely made. It's a heavy-duty process of cooking the chicken, so you need heavy equipment. So then now I take the fork, and I dislodge all the chicken. Ah, uh, yes, sir. And any batter crumbs from the bottom. So we're gonna take that and boom! And there it goes down to the front. And that, that's ready for the production line. My mother, who is from New Orleans, my father, who's from Shreveport, are two of the best cooks that ever was. And I used to just kind of be in the kitchen around my mother just sort of watching her, but it's based it. on all my experiences. We've been around here for 20, 22 years. I think we had something to do with the popularity of fried chicken because now people realize you can get healthy fried chicken. Fried chicken that leaves the oil where it belongs and gives you only the final product. And then we're gonna break it apart and get it ready for when the bell rings. We're ready to make the mama biscuit. <laughs> Biscuits are as American as it well, gets. Well, did it work? The recipe for the biscuits, it came from research and development in Compton. 1985, she joined me in the pursuit of running a business in Compton. X. We call Is her Mama's Biscuits. No, it's from, it's from Dunn's or some biscuit. shit. I wish, I wish <laughs> I'd have been Montreal, dude. This recipe what? took years and years of development. I have people if I could order uh, a Schwartz smoked meat, I would do it every day. Biscuit. As long as I'm in the store, I don't want nobody else to make the biscuit while I'm in the store. She cuts at an angle and then lifts the biscuit at the same time, and it dislodges the biscuit from the rest of the dough. And then they're touching and kissing each other. Very important in baking a biscuit that you do that so they rise together. The center of that, we put what we call Wait. biscuits with the dimple. It's where people put their butter and their honey or syrup. You mean the And honey. they put it right there in the center. Fluffy. Beautiful. I didn't invent fried chicken. The thing I did was perfected it. We say to people that, what kind of food are we? We're American food. When I did my research on Honey's Kettle, I went to the Central Library and researched early American colonial cooking. Kettles in the family fireplace. And guess who was in the kitchen? They all were the color of my skin. They were the cooks. Our people are very good at flavoring food. I can tell when I eat something when it's been cooked right. That could be in my DNA. It was my passion to deliver a product that would last for generations of time. Chicken is now the number one meat consumed in America. We're seeing this resurgence of chicken is because some people really know how that to do cringe. It, and we're one of those people. That's my thing. Honey's kettle fried chicken. How is being proud of your heritage company. and your people but before you? Cringe, it's not. You're just being weird. I want to imagine being triggered to the point where you have to type in chat to some hateful shit because somebody is proud of the people before him who cooked and him cooking and then him being proud of his heritage. It's just so weird. Alright, it doesn't even have anything to do with you.